how do you defend your opinion as a white, well-off, religious man? Um, how do you defend your, ha like, telling a woman what she can do with because her Because evil things are so evil, even if I'm a white, well-off, religious man. And good things are so good, even if I'm a white, well-off, religious man. This is one of these identity politics points that I really, uh, I, mean, I, I don't mean to come down harshly on you, I don't, uh, but it, it is a point that I really have serious moral qualms with. I, I think it's quite, quite terrible. The reason being that the people who were fighting against enslavement of black people were a bunch of well-off white men for the most part. Right? And those people were saying, this is a moral sin. This is a moral blot. They weren't living in the South. They didn't own plantations. They didn't live the lives of the plantation owners. They said, this is evil, and we are here to stop it. Right? When you see something that you think is morally wrong happening, especially when you're talking about the taking of a human life, like, listen, I think that, uh, I think that you shouldn't go around randomly killing homeless people. I just have this view. I'm not a homeless person. Most of the people who randomly kill homeless people are probably not of my economic strata, my religious view, or my, uh, I don't know whether they're of my skin color or not. I have no idea what the, what the actual sociological breakdown of homeless killer serial murderers is. But, uh, but I would suggest that my identity has nothing to do with what is right or wrong. And this is what Western civilization used to be about. Western civilization used to be about the idea that, yes, I'm not a woman in the healthcare field. But you and I can have a conversation about what's right and wrong because this is the nature of human reason. The nature of human reason, the nature of right and wrong, is that you and I can talk about what's right and wrong and that I don't retreat into my identity. If we can all retreat into our identity and our morality is now centered around that identity, morality doesn't exist at all. We break down into a society of fragmented atoms where I can't even say, like, you're torturing a puppy in your backyard. I have nothing to say about that. I'm not a white woman who's in the healthcare field. I'm not going to do that. I don't, I don't, I, I refuse to surrender the idea that I can have a moral stance on issues that are of concern to society and of concern to the, to the well-being of the United States simply because of the color of my skin or the nature of my genitalia. And honestly, I believe any view that feels differently is sexist, racist, and bigoted. So I have um, an issue with your stance on abortion. Okay. Right, so you define life as starting at conception through biology pretty, right. pretty much. But I think you take the stance that life is intrinsically valuable because it's life. And that's where I disagree. I think there's two things that make life valuable. I think consciousness, the ability to experience pain, senses and stuff like that, and personal identity. In particular, uh, psychological continuity identity. So the fact that we have memories, we have relationships, people have relationships to us. I think those are Do you two need both of those or is it neither or? I just want to clarify um, your position. Either or. Okay, so if it's either or, then people with Alzheimer's have real continuity problems, you can't kill them. No, because people still have um, relationships with them, though, right? So, like, just because well, you have, like... I mean, you have a relationship with them, but with people with advanced stage Alzheimer's, they really don't have a relationship Okay, but with for the sake of example, like, let's say someone dies, right? The family gets to decide what you do with the body. Because I know what you say. When, it, when you say someone says, oh, it's just consciousness, and then they're brain dead, you say, well, can you stab them? No, you can't. Because that's the family's decision what to do with the body. It's the person's decision what they so want to do. So if the family decides to stab them, it's okay to stab the, the When they're brain dead? Yeah, if they want to... No, not, not, not brain dead. Let's say that you're comatose for a, for a specifically and predictably short period of time. Say nine months. Say nine... Well, what, what is the person... <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. I saw. So, so I would say uh, on the, the legal grounds, it would depend if what the person put in their will. If the person has made clear statements like, hey, don't pull the plug on nine months, then don't do that. Because I think the first choice is... Right, but let's say the person has not made such clear statements. Say the person can't make such clear statements. So that, and he's just in a complete coma? The, the, let's say the person has not drawn up a living will or had conversations like this. They so go into, they're in a car crash. They so get in a coma. Say, you know that in nine months they're going to come out of the coma and they're going to be fine. Are you allowed to stab? Is so Kevin so Samuel saying, you know what, wait, so these nine fine, months, they're stab the dude. Wait, so they're let's fine, so they're going to get their memories back? Um, let's say they don't get their memories back. Then I would say then that person is dead. And yeah, if the family wants to pull the plug, that's fine. <laughs> I'd have no okay. problem with that, yeah. No, I would have no problem with that. Because that, like, cause that, per like, that person is dead. You're getting dead. some dicey territory, dude. No, I think that person is dead. <laughs> right? And the, that's the best way to define life, is personal identity and consciousness. That's what makes life valuable. Right, so I think that, again, if you were to say both, that's too much. And if you were even to say either, I don't think either one of those legs stands on its own. Okay, because what you really mean, th this is the thing about having a baby. It's a process of development. Right? And this is the point that I'm making. There's yeah. a period in this human life when that child does not have, or fetus or embryo, whatever you want to call it, when this living thing does not have consciousness and does not have a sense of identity. But 
in nine months, it will have consciousness. Well, and even then, by, like the way, by the way, by the way, babies, babies don't have a sense of identity for at least for, for at least a certain number of months after they're born. I mean, but, they um, babies, the babies can uh, recognize their parents' voices after they're born. That's not a sense of identity. Rats can. No, no, identify. no. I say it is because it, it, it's no. It's a form of memory, though, right? And that's what I was. Uh, using so, my... are, so are you a Jainist? Because animals also have consciousness. No, yeah, no. I would identity. say that killing animals is wrong. You have no problem with that. So, just to get this straight. Killing, killing Fluffy the hamster, deeply wrong. <laughs> killing a dude who wakes up from a co who is going to wake up from a coma in nine months with memory problems, totally cool. Okay. Okay, I mean, <laughs> okay, I mean that's fine. You can have that position. I'm just not going to put you in charge of the NHS. <laughs> mentioned how people aren't victims of, cir of circumstance. And As a general rule, some people are, obviously. But um, how do you explain people who aren't given access to certain things and stuff and therefore cannot advance? Like, you cite, like, single mothers and stuff like that and fathers leaving them. Mm -hmm. And women, oftentimes, you see it all across the country, Planned Parenthood clinics being closed down and stuff, and they can't get access to contraceptives or abortion and stuff that would stop them from being in that situation. But you think that somehow they should just help themselves, but when, in fact... Kind of response 35 cents, I think they can help themselves. <laughs> I mean, that's the, the, the idea that, that contraceptives are not available in the United States is absurd. It's absurd, I'm sorry, it's great. The idea that you can't get, a, that you can't get cheap or free condoms anywhere. I don't think that killing babies is the solution to you making bad sexual decisions. End of story. I mean, I don't think that, I don't see why, you know, the unsuccessful decision that you made was the decision to have sex out of wedlock and then get pregnant out of wedlock. That decision is not alleviated by killing so, the rock. So, since you're going to say mothers are forced to be um, parents, should you then also incite, like, laws or something like that, since you're going to force these women to be parents, that force men to be fathers? Well, and there already are. Called, it's called paternity they're, they're tests. They're not fathers because they walk out and leave their kids, and then you have this, as you said, Yes, absolutely, I'm in favor of that. It's called marriage, and the left undermined it. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the system of marriage is the greatest boon to women of all time. And then feminism came along and said men, women need men like fish need a bicycle. And it turns out that women need men like women need men. That's because we live in a society that's set up so women can't get as far as women. No, it's because God created wounds. So women should just, you know, say fuck it and have a child, suck it up and have a child? Well, if you get pregnant, yes, because you don't get to kill things just because it's in your uterus. It's my body. How about you just stay out of it? How about it's dating? How about like, you you're it's talking so much about how... I don't care about your appendix. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about your thorax. I don't even care about your uterus. I care about what's in it. And I can take out my appendix if I don't want it, so why can't I take out other parts of my body? Because they're not independent living human beings. They're not independently living human beings when they're a bundle of cells. Oh, okay, so so let me get this... So, okay, let's let's assume that, you are, that your scientific knowledge is vast. Let's assume your scientific knowledge... So are you also against partial birth abortion? I think it's like I don't understand why people would have a like. I'm you, not at what point? You, at what point does that bundle of cells become a human being in your view? Um. Sorry. Not really. I mean, this is, no, this I, is I just need to calm down. For <laughs> Sorry, did I turn you? Go to another question. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. No, I mean, the, the, it's, it, that is a relevant question. If your argument is that it's a bundle of cells, then the question becomes well, why it's not a bundle of cells. Like, like, unless it's a threat to the mother, they form maternal abortion, it doesn't happen. But if it's a threat to the mother's health, or the mother, like, I don't see why he would force a living human being to give birth to that. Because it's another living human being. So you're going to kill the mother to save the baby? And no, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You're talking about a case where the mother's life is in danger. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't care and stuff after they're born. I agree with you that, that, that abortion is an exception when the, wife's, when the mother's life is in danger. But the concept of bodily autonomy means that I don't have to give up any part of my body unless the baby, I say so. The baby is not part of your body. The baby is a baby. Really, my wife is pregnant right now, and she's 30 weeks pregnant. Yeah. And 30, actually, 32. That baby is kicking the living crap out of her. Okay, that is a living human being in there. Okay, and I promise you that it is not a bundle of cells. I can guarantee you it's not a bundle of cells because that is a baby. Okay, and, 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 and I'm sorry, but. It's technically a bundle of cells that is requiring. You're technically a bundle of cells, right? Uh, the entire concept of why yeah. okay, well, 
Okay. okay. So we'll, we have all the questions that need to be asked. Yeah. We have ten minutes. We've gone all down this, but here's the, here's the final point. This abortion is a very simple issue. If you believe, as you do apparently, that that's nothing in there but just a bunch of goo, then you're right. If you believe in something called science, that that is more than a bundle of goo, then you do not get to kill it just because it's convenient to you. And let me tell you something. No, science definitely dictates that a fetus, until it can leave the womb and be technically viable, is what is a it? bundle of cells inside of a person. Okay, so if you so if you can only live on life support, you're not a person. You stop being a person. So if, you're, so, if I, so if you get in a car crash today, you put your life support on an iron lung. You take off the iron lung, you're going to die. You're not a person anymore? Is that how this works? If my brain is no longer functioning? No, if your brain is functioning, but you can't breathe on your own. Then I'm still technically viable. Brain function- No, you're not, because the machine is keeping you alive. Look, if, again, the bottom line is this. If you are defining whether something is a life or not based on your own convenience, that is the nature of evil. Okay, defining what a human being or not, whether something is a human being or not, based on whether you want it or not, is nasty. You manipulate science to enhance your own. You're the one manipulating science. You're the one suggesting that it's a that it's, a, that it's like snot. You okay, it's not like snot. <laughs> mental illness, when in fact the DSM five, which is the definitive psychological examples of men- mental illness, has declassified. The DSM is highly politicized and has been for decades. It's and it was and, until two years ago. It was, it was classified as gender dis- gender identity disorder of mental illness. Okay, we have a lot of questions. Yeah, because you just don't like what. No, see, the difference is I let you talk. No, but let's go. You have to know my father, but you had the same conversations with him, and you shut him down, too. In what way have I shut you down? You've been talking for like 10 minutes here. <laughs> She's been talking, I've been talking, but you haven't actually answered her question. No, I, I did. You just don't like the answer, and I'm sorry if you don't like the answer. But talk. All right, so um, you're all about freedom of speech, but. You know, since conservatives get, you know, a little squeamish when we talk about sex, because God forbid we all do it, and it's a natural function. I'm aware. Um, so, you know, we're talking about, you know, what defines, uh, you know, a life or whatever. So, um, scientifically speaking, do you consider semen life? So I'm pretty sure that you probably masturbate a lot because you're a human being. So you both put both put So I believe, like I believe, as you most as you most people who feel this way about abortion, that life begins at conception. When sperm meets egg and the and the child is conceived, that's when life begins. That's what I believe. The rest of the question was weird. <laughs> How can you honestly stand up here and say that you support abortion, you support government intervention, excuse me, you support government intervention to uh, make abortion illegal, which is designed to kill someone, and yet you can stand up here and say you don't want government intervention for guns, which are also designed to kill people. Because guns are not designed to kill children. Guns are designed to kill bad guys if operated by a proper person. There's not an abortion in the world that doesn't end with the death of a baby. So, I, so honestly, the reason, so I have, I have, so I, ha- I have no problem with looking at the pictures of gun violence victims other than the problems any other human being left or right would have with looking at those pictures, which is that they're horrific and deeply disturbing and very upsetting. But I don't feel any sense of guilt or avoidance. Like, I can't look at this picture because I bear some sort of responsibility for this. It is impossible not to look at a picture of an aborted baby and say this was disconnected from the act that I approve because the act is the killing of the baby. Uh, there, is no, there is no policy that I approve of that ends with the murder of children. Okay? The, there is a policy that is designed for the murder of children, which is what abortion is. Okay, so, but if all people, right, you said that um, once the cells come together, you said those are considered people, which I can understand. I can get no, I said that's that. considered a human life. A human life, right. Yes. Why is this human life being killed and another human life being killed by gun violence? Why is that any different? Again, it's not a matter of the, the value of the human life being different. It's, it's equally as evil and, and tragic and horrific and disgusting when people kill fully formed children who are outside the womb. My point is that the act that connects to the killing of the children is not connected to my position on guns. The act that connects to the killing of unborn babies is connected to the legalization of abortion. The reason that I want people to be able to exercise their Second Amendment rights is to shoot pieces of 
<laughs> like the people who go into like the people who go into schools and, and shoot up children. Right? Both my uh, I have two kids. They both go to a Jewish school, which means they are on the target list for somebody out there. Right? Jewish schools Jewish schools are disproportionately targeted, unfortunately, in the United States. I went to a Jewish school when I was in high school. There were bomb threats legitimately every couple of months. Uh, in 1999, there was a white supremacist who drove by our Jewish day school, saw an armed guard outside, proceeded to drive away, went to the West Valley JCC, and shot up the West Valley JCC. The reason that I'm in favor of gun rights is because I want that armed guard outside carrying the gun to dissuade people from going inside the school and shooting the kid. The first state to legalize abortion in the case of rape or incest was Colorado in 1967. Hawaii followed in 1970. We can reasonably assume that there were abortions before then. So if we went back to a world where abortion was illegal, how would we deal with the black market, how do you th what do you think positive or negative consequences would be of an increased amount of illegal abortions? And would we prosecute both the mother and the doctor, or just one? How would we handle it? So the, the answer to the question is that there's no major pro-life voice in America who advocates for prosecuting the mother. The reason that people don't advocate for prosecuting the mother is, number one, because it is counterproductive because your goal is to convince women that they shouldn't abort their babies, not to threaten them with punishment. You want, to make, you want them to make the moral choice. You want to and basically, honey is going to win people over more than vinegar. But beyond that, I think that there is a real problem of mens rea, meaning that when you're talking about intent to commit a crime, you actually have to have an intent to commit the crime. So if I'm going to commit homicide upon you, then I have to know that you are a human being, for example. I think that a lot of women have been made to believe for wrong reasons that what they are killing is not actually a human being, and so they lack the requisite mens rea for a homicide charge, even if you were to try and game it out legally. Mostly what people on the pro-life side have talked about is prosecuting abortion doctors who make an actual business out of, out of aborting babies. As to the increase in illegal abortions, I would assume there would be an increase in illegal abortions because all abortions would be illegal. And just logically speaking, anytime you make something illegal that occurs, there will be more illegal instances of that thing happening. And I'm sure that you know, when, when slavery was legal, uh, then you know, it was legal. That didn't make it either moral, decent, or right. Once it was made illegal, then I'm sure that everyone who was holding a slave was in violation of the law. You know, so I guess there were more illegal holdings of slaves after we made slavery illegal. But there was less absolute slavery, which is the actual goal. Illegally holding a slave doesn't kill the slave and doesn't possibly kill the mother. I don't think you want to go down the road where you're justifying slavery. I'm not justifying slavery. <laughs> no, I, no, I mean, I'm, no, really, I'm not I, justifying slavery. I'm saying that... Making some, that the fact that something increases when you make it illegal is... The illegal activity is... is, is the, activity de the, the, the absolute level of the activity decreases, but what's left is going to be illegal just by logical necessity. When, what's left is e when the illegal activity that's left is very, very dangerous, that's, is that a good argument? Do you think that's a good argument or not a good argument? Yes. If I have to wait, it, let's, let's say that you make abortion illegal and there are a million abortions a year in the United States. And let's say at the high end, let's say at the high end, there are still 50,000 illegal abortions in the United States, but all the rest go to term. Okay. Let's say that that's the case because it's going to be hard to actually get an abortion if it's made illegal. Let's say there's still 50,000. You just saved 950,000 lives. That is a, that is a massive net win, obviously.